That's a spinner alert. Hello, I'm Spastastic. Welcome to Spastastic TV. Today we're going to be making an inline spinner alert. And in, in that, the first thing I'm going to talk about is the tools that you need. Now, you don't necessarily need a pair of wire cutters for this, but they come in way handier than you think they are because the reason I say you don't need them is because the needle nose pliers already have a wire cutter on them. And these needle nose pliers are just some old Bain USA craftsmen's. Good luck finding them. Good luck finding them again. Onto the component side, you can go ahead and buy pre-made, uh, if you can see them, pre-made R-bend uh, little open eye uh, wire shafts. But I don't like these. They're way too hard to work with. I, I you almost need the little uh, bending machines in order to make it in order to make a lure. But they they are heavy duty. I mean, like that is a way you can start making them. Um, another thing you're obviously going to need is an inline spinner blade. Hopefully I'm not blinding you. Now, the, the ones that says spinner blades on it, I got those off of AliExpress, and they were like a dollar for uh, ten blades. The one the, These other ones that I have here, I bought them off of Lure Parts Online. And if you're wondering what size they are, they are number fours. They are number fours. All right, so we got that out of the way. Um, what am I going to use as a lure body? Well, I'm going to use a bullet weight. Now, you see the one that's pink. You can't buy them like that. I mean, you might be able to buy them like that. I'm not 100% sure. But the reason why, but, but I did I, I did paint that myself. And the reason why I'm showing a brass bullet weight, too, is because you can also use that if you're not allowed to use lead in the area that you're working on. But I live in Utah. They don't give a crap, so we're going to use lead. They're both 3 8 ounce, by the way, I think. Let me, let me look real quick. It doesn't say. They're roughly around a three-eighths of an ounce. Now, what I'm going to use for the lure body, or the lure frame, is this memory wire here. You can buy these at, like, Michael's, Hobby Lobby, Amazon. I'll probably link to some down in the description, but this is usually made to make bracelets with. Uh, but I'm going to use them to make the lure. So what I usually do is I take one full loop, which is way more material than I need, and cut it out. And the process of bending them out is a little bit of a pain in the ass because it's memory wire. It just wants to go back the way it was shaped. But you can straighten these out, and uh, I'm going to attempt to straighten these out on camera with the pliers. Now, these aren't going to be perfectly straight, and you can actually buy wire straighteners, uh, which would make this a lot easier. But having it be curved a little bit isn't that big of a deal. Isn't that big of a deal. It's not going to affect the way the lure really works. At least that's in theory. But the most important thing is right now is that my hands are moving and words are coming out of my mouth. Now, you take a rough amount of the end part. And this is where I like having a needle nose pliers with the good tips on them. Which you're not... Is it going to focus? You can see what I'm talking about. There's a little bit of a flatter side, there's a little bit more of a rounded side. And I want to use that more rounded side. Put them, put it in there, get it somewhat straight, get it somewhat straight. And this is where a little bit of skill comes involved. Did you want to get, well, that's about an inch and a half, maybe an inch and three quarters. Which is more than I need, but I have more than I need. And hopefully I'm not blowing your eardrums out, because I'm really close to the microphone. And you see how I'm bending it over, the side that I didn't want to bend it over? But that's okay. And bend it like that. Get it roughly like that, if I could get this to focus. And just simply make an R bend with, with the pliers. I screwed that up. Get in the R. And quit twisting on me. And you want to make something roughly like uh, this little R bend right here. It doesn't really matter. Well, I guess it kind of does. And this is a little rough. This is a little rough, but this is like the R bend that you want. And so, first thing you're going to do is I have this nickel plated uh, treble hook here. Is you're going to want to put that in first. Just like that, because if you don't do that now, you're not going to be able to. Take the lure body. Slide that down, slide that puppy down, go in the hole, go in the freaking hole, and somehow get both of the both of the wires in the same hole. Oh, I forgot a step. I was going to use a faceted glass bead to round off the bottom of this. So you're going to want to take your faceted glass bead, which I got these glass beads at Bass Pro Shops or Cabela's. 
we don't have Bass Pro Shops. We got Cabela's, but they're the same thing, so it doesn't really matter. So this is the main part of the, the bottom part of the body sitting in there like that. Then get the lure body, which is this lead weight, and get that in there. Now, look, down there, there already is starting of a spinner right there. Now, you're going to want to take your pliers, focus please, bend it over like that so that the weight can't move up and down. And then, simply take your uh, pliers. Hey, look at focus that time. And cut that off. And I have no idea where that little end piece went. But you're going to want a little bit of a bearing. And for the bearing on this, I'm going to be using a check bead that I bought at Michael's. And just slide that right on over there. And then now we're going to select a blade. Which blade should I go with? Should I go with the Chinese blades from Lure Parts Online or the Chinese blades from AliExpress? I'm actually just going to go with the ones from Lure Parts Online because I think they're easier to open. So, we're using the glass bead as the bearing. Sliding this up and over, and we're, we're taking the back over here. Take this, let it, where's the hole in it? Oh, it's got a pretty big hole in it. Drop the hole right there. Look there, you, you look there, we already got a spinner. Now what do you do for the top part of it? Now I usually take like about a thumb's length, like this, above the blade. And, well that's where I want it to be, so something like that. Actually this doesn't matter. I'm putting divots in my ceiling. Good thing it's done, I don't got a popcorn ceiling. And then, it doesn't really matter, I mean they make pliers for this specific purpose, but you get it back in there. You might want to slide it down a little bit to where it's the thumb length. And then, you take it, you bend it over the proper side. And I probably should have just left that bit of wire there, because this is going to be a little bit more difficult now. Get it in there like that. Focus. Please focus. And this is where you're going to need a firm grip on your pliers. And preferably you'd leave more of a hole. Ow! crap this is where he, I, I already screwed up on this I might have to do a different one but you can see I got that if I'd have left the wire that was already on there or if I had another pair of pliers which I don't I thought I had a multi-tool on me actually I do have a multi-tool on me jump guy by the way you could do this with your finger if you don't cut the material off way too small So I'm making this I'm making this more of a pain in the ass than it needs to be. It's got one loop in it. Focus, please. But it's got one it's got one loop in it, which will be more than enough. And I'm just gonna leave the little excess tab of wire on there. But if you don't if you don't follow the instructions on the cutting the wire off at the end and you actually just make the loop and then you twist it over with your fingers it's way easier but anyhow that's that's a spitter lure but anyhow i'm spastastic you're watching spastastic tv hopefully this was informative and thank you for watching